Yesterday I sprayed five coats of my Verathane water-based polyurethane onto this guitar body. And today I plan to do more of the same, but before I do, I'm going to level sand with some 400 grit. And there's a couple of reasons I like to do that. Uh, first of all, it gives the surface uh, a nice tooth for the next coat to adhere to, uh, but it also allows me to correct any flaws, any little goobers that might appear in the finish. Um, I have a couple here and there, but um, for the most part, it's, it's pretty smooth. Um, before I do that, however, I wanted to take a step back and talk a little bit more about um, the technique I use for, for spraying this, uh, this product. Um, when you open up a can of nitrocellulose lacquer, you'll notice it's clear. You can see all the way to the bottom. It has a slight amber tint to it, but for the most part, it's clear. However, when you open up a can of polyurethane, water-based polyurethane, um, it looks like milk with a slight bluish cast to it. And I, I can imagine a lot of people, when they see that, they think, oh, you know, I don't want to paint my guitar white. Um, and that's understandable. But in truth, when you spray it down thin, um, it goes on clear. You don't see that milky, white, bluish haze that, uh, is present in, when it's in the can. Um, it's because it's so much thinner, it goes on fairly uh, clear. However, um, if you spray it too heavily, you will start to see that milky bluish cast in the finish. Um, typically though, if you give yourself enough time between coats for it to dry, that, that milky color with the bluish haze will go away. It'll, it'll uh, vanish and the, the uh, polyurethane dries crystal clear. The problem is though, if you rush it too quickly, if you apply it heavy and see that, that milky white bluish haze and then you go back and you don't allow enough time for it to dry and you go back and spray another coat, there is a possibility that you can trap that bluish haze into the finish. And I've heard some people say, oh, don't worry about it because once it cures, that'll go away. But when you're putting like 10 to 15 coats on a guitar and you started to see that bluish haze early on, it's not gonna go away. It's stuck there. It's trapped inside the finish. Um, so ideally, when you're spraying this, you wanna spray it thin enough to where you don't get a lot of that that milky bluish haze. At the same time, you want even coverage, but more importantly, you want to set the guitar aside and let it dry an adequate amount of time so that that, that bluish cast goes away before you spray the next coat on. Um, oftentimes people ask, well, how thick do you spray a finish? And uh, there's a couple of ways that you can uh, determine that. One is visually, and then the other is to actually use uh, a wet film thickness gauge. And um, if you're familiar with what a wet film thickness gauge is and how to use it, uh, you can actually check to see how thick the film is that you just sprayed. And typically with this kind of product, you want to keep it around two to four mils thick. Um, you, you really don't want to go over four mils because with this product, it will start to get that milky bluish haze in it. I typically would keep it closer to, to two mil. Um, to check the thickness visually, it's just important to understand that as you're spraying it, you want to be able to see that the surface is evenly covered, that it's wet, and if you start to see that bluish haze, you know it's time to start backing off. Um, you don't want to have a really strong uh, milky bluish cast to it. If you do, there's always the potential that it's so thick it's going to start to run. Um, so just be aware that, that when you start to see that, you want to start to back off. If I was really ambitious, I could spray all 15 coats of my clear. Um, the problem with that is when you're using a water-based product, whether it's water-based acrylic or polyurethane, if you spray too quickly, um, you run that risk of the finish drying with that milky blue haze in it. And um, so I found the best way to avoid that is 
Uh, first of all, you want to spray your coats uh, as thin as you can, but still get even coverage. And you want to make sure you uh, include ample dry time between each coat. Uh, otherwise, what happens is you spray down the finish, you let it dry for say 20, 30 minutes. It feels dry, but then when you spray the next coat, that, that fresh coat reactivates the previous coat, and that previous coat will start to develop that milky blue haze. And when that happens, it's trapped in the finish, and um, there's a good chance it's never gonna go away. So to prevent that from happening, you just wanna make sure that you, first of all, spray your coats on as thin as you can, but still get even coverage. And then uh, if you see that milky blue haze, you wanna make sure that you let the surface dry um, long enough to where that haze goes away and it's, it dries crystal clear. So, and then time it and see how long that takes. It's gonna be different in, depending on temperature and humidity, uh, but generally we're talking at least 45 minutes, up to 90 minutes. Um, you can actually let this uh, finish sit um, for as long as 24 hours before it's a good idea to, to thoroughly uh, level sand it um, prior to, to spraying additional coats. Um, so, you know, there is some flexibility there, but again, to, to uh, just to reiterate, because this seems to be the big issue that people have with water-based finishes, to avoid that blue haze, spray thin but consistent, and allow ample time between coats to let it dry before spraying the next one. Okay, to reiterate what I said earlier about what happens when you apply the uh, water-based poly too fast or too thick and the resulting uh, blue cast, that blue cast normally is more noticeable over darker colors. And this is another guitar that I'm doing at the exact same time. Uh, this one also has five coats of poly on it, uh, but it has a very dark burst around the edge. And the poly has dried crystal clear. There is no blue cast to it. And that's because I sprayed it thin, consistent, and I allowed um, at least 45 minutes to an hour between coats uh, for it to dry so that that blue haze never had a chance to develop. Okay, I'm using 3M's 216U Free Cut Gold uh, sandpaper. Uh, this stuff works really great. As you can see, it powders up the top coats of my water-based polyurethane. Um, and the paper stays fairly clear. You do have to occasionally stop and just wipe it down with a towel, but that's all it takes. Uh, no wet sanding. Uh, and let me reiterate that. With a water-based finish, you should never uh, wet sand. And I know some of you are going to think, well, how do, you, how do you level and polish it later on? And I'll explain that later. But um, uh, suffice to say, there are a lot of uh, new high-tech sandpapers on the market that you can use that do a fantastic job without the use of any kind of water or lubricant of any sort. So uh, I've, uh, I haven't wet sanded in years, and uh, I'm quite happy with just dry sanding. So I'm using the 400 grit now and I'll continue to sand to get the surface level. Now when you first start to sand you'll notice the surface becomes really flat. But then if you look at it in the right light you'll notice a lot of uh, glossy speckles in the surface. Those are low spots and what I want to try to do is eliminate those as I'm dry sanding and that will bring me down to a nice flat level surface. It also means I'll sand off a layer or two or a coat or two of the finish that I just sprayed on. So um, in the end, instead of having 15 coats, it's more like you have 12 coats. So um, just be aware of that. You'll notice I'm also sanding in a circular pattern. Sanding in a circular pattern is much more aggressive and that allows me to get the sanding done a lot faster. Um, and I don't worry about swirls in the finish because I'm gonna spray down another five coats over the top of this, so that's, that's not even gonna be a factor. Later on, when I do my last level sanding after the final coat, that's when I'll start to sand in one direction. 
So uh, right now I don't worry too much about it. Now another uh, advantage of using water-based finishes is if right now I were to, let's say by accident, sand through my top coats and into the underlying color, or you know, all the way down to the wood, it's really just a simple matter of taking um, some of the dye that I originally used to dye the body and just touching that spot. And then later on, when I start applying the next uh, round of clear coats, I just spray right over the top of it. It works great. It's, it's so easy to fix.